Hello. I thought I'd talk today about, well not tea, <clears throat> but about jobs. Because <clears throat> robots are stealing our jobs. Okay. And I want to talk about what's going to happen in the economies of the world. Maybe, probably, over the next 10 to 20 years. Um, just to give a bit of background on this, um, we in the West, um, and in fact around the world, are suffering from a Great Depression in our economies. Um, of course the politicians won't tell you that's what it is, um, but um, things have been tough since the 80s. Um, there's been a, a trend towards deflation, which is a big bugbear. Economists don't like it, although it's good for prices, it brings them down. That's not good for business, because it tends to cancel out jobs and money, basically. It makes it hard to invest. Obviously, because you're not earning so much money, prices are falling. We've seen prices, for instance, in technological products sliding and sliding and sliding since the 80s. Um, and this is caused by innovation and competition, um, and it's just one of those natural cycles, and it happens every 50 years or so. So there was a previous depression um, in the 1930s, and before that in the 1870s, and I think the 1820s as well, as in different phases of the Industrial Revolution. Um, and in each case, um, it's not really clear how the economy goes into it or how it comes out of it. Economists argue about it. But the most viable theory is that of Joseph Schumpeter, who says that, at least on the, on the coming out of depressions, um, you go into depressions through kind of a build-up of debt and, and things of this sort, um, which kind of overweighs the economy, and you come out of it through a technological boom, um, innovations in technology, um, produce new industries, new opportunities, and money starts to be made again, and the debts are liquidated or paid off, and the economy can move on again. So, in the 1930s depression, for example, we got out of that effectively through the electronics boom. The transistor was invented, oh, right about 1915, 19, something like that. Um, they had the electronic valve. Um, it was a, a kind of transistor, basically, um, which is an electronic switch in simple terms. And that simple invention has led to everything in electronics almost today, um, from automated traffic lights to computers. They're full of transistors doing, making decisions on, off, yes, no, one, zero, like that. Just little switches, all organised logically, and you can make decisions with them um, and process data. And the electronics industry and World War II, which kicked it off, really, because it, it caused massive investment in technology, obviously, um, kicked us into a boom time through the 60s and the 70s. And that kind of reached a peak. And around about 1973, we had um, massive inflation in Britain. It was 23%, I think it went up to, which is a lot for Britain. I know some places in the world suffer far more than that. Um, but for Britain, that was incredible. Okay, I can remember... I learned the wrong lesson. I learned that saving money was a waste of time because you could not possibly save. If you stuck your money in the bank, you'd lose 20% of it in a year, no matter what, right? It was, it was hopeless. I, I carried that lesson forward and didn't save enough in subsequent years as inflation came down. Um, that's my story. The, the proper investment at that time was actually real estate. Um, but I blew that. I blew it. <laughs> no, no luck there, I'm afraid. Um, But now, um, with that peak in the 70s, we've had 
kind of struggles in the 80s and 90s and 2000s in our economies. And at the moment, governments are desperately printing money. They call it quantitative, quantitative easing, okay, to try and pump money into the economy, to try and get businesses to invest, uh, to employ people, and so on. And there's a big strategic problem as well on top of this depression, which is that uh, large numbers of baby boomers. Um, there were a lot of births after the Second World War ended and all the soldiers came home and discovered all the women all of a sudden and um, had lots of babies. So those babies are now retiring. And we have a situation where um, those baby boomers themselves didn't have so many children and in the West people are not having many children because it's too expensive, our economy is too rubbish, actually we can't afford to buy houses, to, to look after kids properly as we'd like to, and so on. So we're not having many children, and there's going to be something like two to three pensioners per worker to be supported. And the pension systems were not set up in a clever way. Instead of setting them up so that the money, the taxes were invested to produce dividends, which would then be used to pay the pensions. Instead, the taxes are taken and given straight to the pensioners. It, the pension payments come straight out of taxes, effectively, from governments anyway. Um, which is... I don't know why it was done like that. I suppose there were good reasons at the time. But um, it shows a certain lack of forward planning, maybe. Uh, because now there are too many pensioners, or going to be, over the next five years. Um, and our economies are going to be in terrible, terrible debt. They already are, if we count the, if we count the um, pension deficit. Britain's deficit is amount amounts to something like a, a trillion pounds, one and a half trillion dollars. Say, it's it's chronic and unpayable. Governments are printing money desperately, trying to stoke up inflation. But this is, this is all um, dangerous. It can lead to more debt, after all. And debt brings economies down. It, it's what seems to pump up depressions, um, in a way. Um, but, just as the electronics boom brought the Great Depression of the 1930s to an end, we are on the threshold of a new technological boom. This is robotization and automation. The good news is this is going to cause massive increases in productivity in industry and business. Truly monumental. Our countries are going to be so rich. Okay, We're already rich relative to the rest of the world, but, but this is going to be massive. The bad news is, robots are going to take your job. There are answers to this, one in particular, and I'll come to that. But just to give you an idea of how thorough going um, this change is going to be, um, I've had a look online, and there's some future institute <coughs> thing whose name I've just forgotten, but I'll put a link to it in, uh, below the video. Um, from Oxford University who've been studying which jobs are likely to be replaced by automation and they've given some sort of probability charts. And I printed that chart out and I forgot to fetch it. I'll just go and fetch it now. Excuse me a moment. I'll have to trim this video in a bit. Got it! Not use printing stuff out if you're going to leave it on the printer, is it, really? Um, okay. All right, well, but just to um, give you an idea, according to their calculations, these are the jobs most likely to be replaced by robots over the next few years. We're talking 10 to 20 years, but a lot of them are going to go very quickly. With 99% probability of being replaced, we have data entry keyers, library technicians, new accounts clerks, photographic process workers and processing machine operators, tax preparers, cargo and freight agents, watch repairers, 
insurance underwriters, mathematical technicians, hand sewers, title examiners, abstractors and searchers, and telemarketers. Hey, uh, telemarketers are going to go. Oh, yeah, unfortunately, you'll be, they'll be replaced with robots, but there you go. Um, and there are lots of others, like 98% order clerks, loan officers, tellers. We, we've, most, most of the tellers in our, our banks are already gone. Um, um, that's things of this sort. Even etchers and engravers. Packaging and filling machine operators and tenders. Procurement clerks. It just goes on and on. Um, I've got a list here. Um, construction supervisors and labourers are high risk. Oh, of course, drivers and deliveries. We're, we're hearing all about drones these days. Computerised little flying robots to deliver stuff. And of course there'll be self-drive cars, um, which are going to be coming very quickly to our roads. They'll reduce pollution, they'll destroy traffic jams. Um, I think they're going to be a great thing, actually. Unfortunately for a lot of people, their jobs will go. Um, shop workers. Um, already the number has been reduced because we have these, at the moment, absolutely imbecilic self-service tills. Unexpected item in bagging area. Bag oh, shut up. Right. Um, CCTV operators. Um, call centre workers, for routine inquiries anyway. Paralegal and pre-trial researchers. Uh, a lot of their work can be automated because it involves looking up data. Um, production line work, um, I'm afraid. Uh, um, factory and production work in general, in fact. Um, office clerks and admin work, very likely to be replaced. Uh, sales, think about this. A lot of sales stuff can be done via the internet now. You don't really need salespeople harassing people. You just need to make sure that viewers on the web see the right pages, really. Okay, and if they, if they haven't got ad blockers, they're working on that, of course. Um, even some medical diagnostics. Um, IBM's Watson computer is being used to, to help um, diagnose cancers um, now in America in one place. Um, and that, that sort of thing will spread um, because it's, it's much more efficient and less biased. Uh, and can look at a vast, vast amount of data. Um, in total, 47%, <clears throat> nearly half of all jobs, are likely to be replaced within 20 years, and a lot of those are going to go within the next 5 and 10. And as I pointed out, we've already seen some of that. The bank clerks are disappearing, the, the um, checkout operators at the supermarkets are disappearing, um, Drivers are probably going to be next, um, it seems to me. There are a number of jobs which are safe or, or very hard to automate. automate. I've got them too. Let's have a look. The safest one of all. How about that? Recreational therapists. I guess if you work in a gym and you want to, you know, teach, give people some therapy or massage or something of that sort. I, I don't know if that's what it is, but it sounds like it. So your job is safe. <laughs> okay. Uh, first line supervisors of mechanics, installers and repairers, emergency management directors, mental health and substance abuse social workers, their jobs are safe. That's a, a sad thing, really. Um, audiologists, occupational therapists, uh, orthotists and prosthetists. Okay. Healthcare in general, basically healthcare and medical workers in general, will do quite pretty well. Um, um, dentists, dietitians, um, lodging managers, choreographers, sales engineers. What on earth is that? Physicians and surgeons in general, instructional coordinators, psychologists, um, first line supervisors of police and detectives, dentists, general, uh, elementary school teachers except special education. Medical scientists, except epidemiologists. Educal, education administrators and elementary and secondary school uh, administrators, okay. 
podiatrists, clinical counselling and school psychologists, mental health counsellors, fabric and apparel pattern makers, set and exhibit designers, human resource managers, that sort of thing. Right. Um, I've made my own list here. Generally, the creative professions um, are pretty safe from automation, obviously. So that's like chefs, fashion designers, architects, except maybe routine, the people who design these ugly tower blocks. Um, people who design innovative buildings are pretty safe, but the, I think the... Uh, the drudge workers are not safe. Um, anybody can throw up a... Certainly any robot can throw up a, an ugly modular tower block, right? Um, artists, academics, including scientists, engineering uh, people. Um, PR jobs are probably pretty safe. Negotiators, people of that sort. Um, management, of course, is safe. Um, uh, business owners, people like that. Um, computer work is probably safe. Um, plumbers, probably safe. Media, legal jobs, education, generally. Community work is pretty safe. Um, there are some in-between jobs, like um, construction supervisors and things like that, who are 50-50. Um, the jobs in the middle of the range are things like computer programmers, Crossing guards, agricultural engineers, roof bolters and miners, police, fire and ambulance dis dispatchers, court reporters, dental assistants, shoe and leather workers and repairers, maintenance people in general are sort of in the middle, really. Um, installation, maintenance, repair, that sort of thing is in the middle. Um, a certain amount of supervising as well is in the middle. But overall, we're looking at about half of all jobs being at high risk of being replaced. And what's the solution? Well, at the moment, I think the authorities are heading towards a wrong solution because they're bringing in lots and lots of immigrants, as I mentioned earlier, um, to take up jobs to pay these pensions. OK. That was a plan made probably five years ago, ten years ago, before this new technological boom was realised. Um, but their jobs are not going to be uh, around either. So we're going to be stuck with massive, massive unemployment. And how do we deal with it? Um, what can you do um, if your job is at risk? And I would say almost every job has some risk. Uh, you never know what advantages uh, the technology is going to have um, and what it's going to do. So, generally, online work, you, if you can find something creative to do online, you might be all right. Media jobs, something of this sort. Um, the safe jobs that I mentioned in general. Um, a good education will stand you in good stead because it'll give you some flexibility, it'll give you more options. You can do some mundane, unskilled work, but you can also do something which actually requires some sort of uh, background or in, in education or judgment or s skills or something. So it gives you flexibility. Those sorts of things. Anything which requires social intelligence, including social work and caring and um, negotiating, managing, that sort of thing. Um, but if you've no people to manage, you won't have a job. Um, so you have to be sort of upper, upper. Um, upper level management, management probably. Um, so what are the governments going to do for, do about it? Um, well, there is a very interesting plan on the horizon. It's called the Universal Basic Income. And it sounds a bit far out when you first talk about it because the idea is you give everybody that is, everybody, a guaranteed income. Pensioners, workers, children, criminals, I, I expect, anyway. Um, it's going to be almost unconditional if it's to work. It has to satisfy two conditions, basically. One, it has to be more or less unconditional. I mean, OK, you've got to be alive. <laughs> um, possibly you've not got to be in prison, I don't know. Um, and 
I suppose you might have to be a citizen of the country, obviously, and living and working, or living there. Okay, it would make sense. Um, and oh, it has to um, be enough to satisfy your basic needs. So it has to cover food and housing and utility bills. Okay. So in Britain, you're probably looking at £2,000 a month, I would say, would cover that. Whether you're working or not. Now, there are lots of worries about this. It would distort markets. Surely property prices would go up. But thinking about it, it wouldn't happen because um, the way it's, it's planned is that wages would come down by exactly that amount. So that if you're in a job, you get your 2000 from the government every month. Like in the game of Monopoly, you pass go, pick up your 2000 pounds, 200 in that game, um, pick up your 2000 and carry on working, and you get the rest of your wages from your employer. And if you're not working, if you're a creative trying to set up a business at home, um, or you're just a lazy ass wanting to watch football all day, you get your £2,000, and that's up to you, right? It won't hurt that a lot of people don't want to work, because there won't be the jobs anyway. Okay. And actually, um, from studies that have been done so far, people usually do want to work, because most people want something more than the basic requirement. I mean, maybe 10% of people are not that bothered, okay. <clears throat> but the rest do want to do something with their lives. And even those who really don't want to work may well do voluntary work and community work in the end, um, because it gets very depressing to just sit at home watching the TV all day. Okay, You can do it for a while, but after a while, it's it's not comfortable um, for a, for a, a, a normal human being, right? <laughs> and the entertainment isn't good enough anyway. Um, so that's a big advantage because it would allow people to set up new businesses and introduce new ideas, things they couldn't take a risk on, because you can't just leave a job when it's your meal ticket and start up a business. Or if you do leave a job and start up a business, you stand to lose everything, right? All your money, all your savings, you you stand, plan to get, you could get into massive debt, you could lose your family because they don't like you anymore. It's big risk, right? Um, and a lot of business is being stifled due to lack of security, basically. With <clears throat> enough, you're with your with your living standard guaranteed, you could go on from there. Um, and this, along with the automation in the existing industries and others, will lead to massive, massive booms in business. And the depression will be... Whoosh, blown out of the water over the next 10 years. And it'll the boom will carry on probably for 20 odd years until things stagnate again and we need more innovation and it'll be a, something else in the next. The next depression will be, I suppose, um, 80, 90, 100, 10s, 20s, in the, in the 2030s or so, say. That'll be another time, typically. Things may change, it may speed up, may slow down, but something like that. And the next technological boom in the 2050s or so will be, who knows, nanotechnology maybe, um, biotechnology. Um, I know everybody, everybody's against GMO these days, but we do need it, I'm afraid. This just isn't just an aside, because otherwise so many people are going to starve to death. Um, we, can't, we can't do it with current farming methods. Um, so something has to be invent has to be used. Um, so a lot of well-meaning people are, are going to cause a lot of starvation on that. So we do need to make that technology safe uh, and use it. Just just on the side, but that might be a, a future boom based on that, um, or it may actually come in over the current boom. But bio bioengineering in general, genetic engineering um, may well be the next boom. Um, or it could be nanotechnology, microscopic robots and machines and computers. Um, don't know, that's too far ahead. Um, but what do you think? I mean, the guaranteed basic income, there are lots of documentaries about it online. Some of them don't tell you much about it, really. Um, 
But what do you think? Would that be a solution? Um, obviously, immigration is not a solution anymore. Um, I think what immigration does is it, it brings in people who are likely to vote for left-wing governments, um, and so those parties are particularly in favour of it. Um, but it, it's going to be a big problem because when the guaranteed income comes in, these people aren't going to say, oh, I don't want a guaranteed income, I'm going home. Oh no, <laughs> they're not going to do that. Okay, so what are we going to do? I don't know. Um, the politicians really are like 10 years out of date with these ideas and they're just starting to think about the guaranteed basic income. And Switzerland is going to hold a referendum on it on June the 5th this year, 2016. Maybe they'll vote for it, maybe they won't. The, the particular plan might not be good, they, you know. Um, there are different ways of doing it. I believe Finland is experimenting with it. Um, parts of the Netherlands are experimenting, a couple of towns are experimenting with it at the moment. Canada did some experiments with it, but not very good experiments because the amount of money they gave was not sufficient to live on. And so it did not um, fulfil the requirements. Um, um, you might think, how can we possibly afford to give everybody £2,000 a month? <clears throat> the answer is, if essentially it's cheaper than all the, the mass and maze of benefits we've got at the moment. Because all of those need, co need complex administering, you need to check for cheating and so on. With the basic income, somebody just has to be a citizen, they just have to be living here, that's it. Bang, they'll get the money. There's, there's almost no checking needed. Um, so all those admin workers will be out of job as well, social workers, those, those types of clerks. Um, <clears throat> but they'll have their guaranteed income and they can start up a business or something um, or help the local community or do something really beneficial instead of preventing people who need help from getting help because the rules, they don't tick the right boxes or giving help to people who don't need it. Um, you know how it, how it is at the moment, it's terribly inefficient. Um, There'll be rationalisation on taxes and so on as well to help it, and our countries can afford it. In fact, even poor countries uh, look like they can afford it, um, especially as it becomes self-generating because people start up simple little home businesses and start making more money, all of which helps because they pay taxes. Um, there's less corruption because there's fewer bureaucrats interfering with stuff. It's quite a good idea all round, I think. Um, let me know what you think <coughs> in the notes below or the comments below or however. Um, and I'll see you in the next vlog. Okay. Do subscribe or like, please. Um, and let all your friends know. Hey, how about that? Hey, bye for now.